Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Daddy Views back with another video and today I will show you guys 25 tips and hidden features that will turn you into an iPhone Pro. These are tips and hidden features that most regular iOS users probably don't know and don't use on their device. But knowing these will help you a lot on the daily use of your iPhone and you will uncover some hidden potentials of your device like this one right here when you go to your notes app you will have your notes here did you know that you can actually turn any of your notes into a pdf file and that's actually very simple to do all you have to do open the note tap the share button right there and then tap on print once you have done this you will see the pages right there you tap again the share button and save it to files just like that you have saved the note and now it's a pdf file we can go to the files app right here there we have it we open it and here we have a pdf file that we just created out of that note now this right here is very useful as well so on notes you can add different attachments links and photos and anything you want but if you want to find an attachment it's sometimes very hard to do because you might not know in which note you have that attachment and if you have a ton of notes like i have here around like 1500 notes it's very hard to find the one that you want but what you can do is display all the attachments that you have on your notes you tap right there and then you tap view attachments and they will have all the attachments photos and videos your scans websites audio anything that you have attached to all of your notes in one place now this right here is very useful as well now this will work on the notes app but of course it will work everywhere else on ios wherever you have a text like a message or an email you can do this trick so if i want to select this row right here i can just put the cursor there if i double tap there it will select the last word on that sentence but if i want to select all this sentence right here triple tap on the screen just like that and it will select the complete sentence and we're staying here on the notes app for a few more minutes so what you can do on the notes app whether you're on all of your notes or on any of your folders you can tap the three dots right there and now you can choose to sort your notes now sorting notes here has a difference so the default one will be by date edited so anytime you edit a note even though it might be an old note it will place it to the top of your notes that's how it is by default but you can choose date created right there and it will sort your notes by the date you have created them it doesn't matter whether you have actually edited them later or not and i will show you guys what i'm talking about here in a second so if we go again here you also will have another option here to choose to actually sort them by title and also if you cho choose to sort them by date you can choose whether you want to put the newest first old or the oldest first now what i'm talking about here when it comes to date of creation and editing of course these are different because you can edit a note after you have created it so whenever you're on a note just swipe down and right there you can see it says october 31st so what i can do there is tap on it and it will show me created so it shows the date when this note was first created tap once more and then it shows the date when it was last edited now here we have another one for the notes whenever you're on the notes app when you bring up the keyboard you will notice you have a plus sign right there what you can do is tap that plus button and now you will have here some very useful tools you will have your text format you can create the checklist here you can add lines you can have here your camera for scans if you tap and hold on it you will have a few different options and you will have the markup tools as well so just tap that plus button and you can show and hide all the tools that you can use on the notes app moving on into the shortcuts app now this one right here is one of my favorites so i don't prefer to keep orientation lock on my device turned on because on a lot of apps you will need to have orientation lock off so that's just annoying so if you have any app that you want to have the orientation lock turned on all the time you can do that automatically so you tap on new automation right there and then you find app you go ahead and choose here run immediately and then choose the app here so what you can do here just choose the app and then 
go ahead tap next new blank automation and search here for orientation lock so there we have set orientation lock tap on it and then you will have your toggle you tap on it tap on turn and then switch it to on right there and tap the dumb button now every time you open that app orientation lock will be turned on automatically Another automation that I think is very useful is one that you can do for your Wi-Fi. So go ahead and create a new automation and then go ahead and choose here, leave. So what I want you to do is choose a location here and you can choose your home location. Now, once you have done that, you can go to next and then tap on new blank automation and search for Wi-Fi. So that we have set Wi-Fi and tap there to turn it off and tap the dumb button. Now what you have done here is that you have created an automation which actually turns off Wi-Fi completely once you leave your house. You don't want your Wi-Fi to actually connect to unsecured networks or just scan around for new networks and consume a ton of battery. If you use cellular data outside the house, make sure that you have the Wi-Fi turned off automatically every time you leave your house. Now, whenever you're on Safari and you're on the website, you can go ahead and tap and hold on a word to select it. But what you can do from here is tap on find selection and that will find that word that you have selected on that website. So if you're searching for a word, all you have to do is just highlight it, tap it on find selection and it will find all the matching words on that website. Now, one really useful feature on Safari is the ability to open links in the background. So if I'm here on this website and I see something that I'm interested in, if I tap on it, it will take me out of this website and go to that other link. I don't want to do that. I want to continue reading this, but go back later to that other link. What I can do is tap and hold on that link and tap open in background. That way I will stay here and that link will be ready for me in the background, just like you see it right there. Now, what's really cool on Safari is a feature that you will have access to only when on the landscape mode. I wish Apple would do that for the portrait mode as well, because most people, most of the time will be using, of course, Safari on the portrait mode. But again, if you're on the landscape mode, what you can do here, you can see the tabs at the top, you can tap and hold one of them, and this will give you the option to actually rearrange your tabs. You can do that by title or by website, and I think it's actually pretty useful. Now, another thing that I think is very, very useful that you can do on Safari is that when you go to your tabs view, you will get this plus button right there in the corner. If you tap and hold on it, it will show you all the tabs that you have recently closed on Safari. So if I close that tab right there, when I go back here to the tabs view, tap and hold there, it will show me the recently closed tabs and I can go ahead and go back to that tab anytime I want. Moving on to the mail app now, on the stock mail of iOS, whenever you go to the mail and you wanna see your drafts, the easiest way to do that, which you can do from anywhere, whether you're here at your mailboxes or maybe reading an email, all you have to do is tap and hold the compose button and it will show you all the drafts that you have saved. Of course, you can also start a new message from here or just continue on any of your drafts. And while we're at the mailboxes right here, you can actually easily rearrange these anytime you want. So I have send later right here. If I wanna place it at the top, I can just go ahead and drag it right there. So just rearrange them any way you need or any way you like simply by tapping, holding, and then just drag them around. You can place them anywhere you want. Just like on the notes app where I showed you guys that like hidden menu, you can also get that on the mail app. So if I'm composing a mail, I get this button right here. You can see that arrow. If I tap on it, it will show me a lot of useful tools right here. Of course, we can format the text, the text here. We can add a photo. We can take a photo. We can scan the document, scan text, add a file, or mark up anything we want. All of these will be shown here once you tap that arrow on the mail app. Moving on to the phone app, while on the phone app, when you go to make a call, if you have two different phone numbers on your iPhone, what you can do is tap right there to switch the lane. So you can see where it says seller data in this case, I can use the seller data line or the primary line simply by switching from here. Now, before I wanna make a call, I can go ahead and choose which line I want to actually use for that phone call. 
One feature that Apple had recently added to iOS to the App Store actually is very, very useful. So when you go to the search section, you don't have to reach for that search bar to actually start searching. Now this will be very handy if you use your iPhone with one hand. All you have to do is while you're here, just tap once more on the search bar and it will bring up the keyboard. Another very useful feature on the App Store, when you're searching for something or just exploring games or apps, if I go here and then go here and I'm just exploring, I wanna go back to the main page. In this case, I don't have to tap four times there. I can just tap again on games and it brings me right to the front page. As you probably know by now, on the Photos app, you can copy and paste edit from photos to photos and to videos and vice versa. But you didn't know that if you copy the edits from a picture like right here, I can copy the edits of this picture. I can go ahead and select actually a bunch of pictures here and I can paste that edit to all of these pictures. So I have selected 15 of those. I can just go ahead and paste the edits to all of them. And you can see it has completed right now in a couple of seconds, it has pasted the edits from one picture to 15 of those. Now here are a couple ones that are actually very, very simple, but I'm really surprised how many iPhone users don't actually know about this. So when you're on the home screen, if you wanna go back to the last app that you have been using, in this case, I was using the Photos app, I don't need to have the icon or go to the app switcher to go to that app. All you have to do is swipe from the left to the right, right here at the bottom just like that and it brings you to the last app that you have been using or if i'm here i don't have to go to the app switcher to move to the other app just swipe again like that you can swipe here between apps as easy as that just like you would be swiping between like different pages maybe or pictures you can do that for apps as well so just like this and move between apps now here are a couple of other tips that you need to know when it comes to phone calls so let's say you're receiving a phone call, the iPhone ringer won't go off, you will have the iPhone ringtone they are playing, you will have two different options which you can actually do very, very quickly. Maybe you don't wanna, maybe you have your iPhone on your pocket or somewhere, or don't wanna reach for the button to turn it off or something, you have received a call, what you can do here is tap once on the side button, just press once. If you press once, it will silent the ringer of your iPhone. But if you wanna decline the call, all you can do is just press twice, so one, two, and it will actually decline that call. Moving on to the Files app. You can see how I have my files arranged right here. So I'll have folders at the top, then we have images, music, and all the files are actually separated into different groups. You can do that very easily. You go into any of the folders that you have on the Files app, tap the three dots right there, and what you can do now is tap on view options. So by default, it will be none, just like this. But of course, this is not really good organized. We can choose here kind, and as you can see, it will group the files based on the types of files, which is actually really, really useful. What you can do also here is actually choose to show all the extensions of the file so you know every file what extension has. Now, after you have actually separated your files here into different groups, you can now go to date. So you tap date and tap right there. So you can choose the date, how you want to actually arrange your files. It, again, it will keep them still on groups, but by tapping there, it will actually rearrange them. And you can see that arrow right there will change based on how many times you tap on it and will actually rearrange your apps based on the date from newest to oldest or from oldest to newest. And last but not least, we have the stop playing feature of iOS, which is actually very useful. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know, actually know about this, but you might not know that it actually works for YouTube as well. So you go ahead and set a timer here, and what you can do is tap when the timer ends and just select stop playing. Tap it on set, and this will work with any media that you have playing on your device. Whether you're playing music, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, anything you're playing will stop playing after this timer ends. So that is it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button, and of course, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you on the next one.